Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia's latest COVID-19 patient has been repatriated to his homeland. Education officials enhance early childhood learning to address literacy challenges. And the GEF Southeast Coast project takes shape in St. Lucia. The 27-year-old male visitor who arrived in St. Lucia on Sunday, September 6, 2020 and was retested for COVID-19 in-country has departed the island. On the evening of Wednesday, September 9, 2020, the visitor was repatriated to the United States via private airline. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George says the Ministry of Health is continuing work on the case. Dr. Belmar George says investigations and contact tracing by the health team at the hotel on Wednesday, September 9th, has indicated that the transmission risk is low thus far. The adherence by the hotel management and staff to the recommended protocols has resulted in low exposure during the limited period of his stay. Some of the measures in place which assisted in the early identification and management of the case included the following. Retesting at the airport for all questionable test results received, early identification and isolation of visitors with pending tests or positive tests, the adherence with hotel protocols at all times, exhaustive contact tracing and testing by all possible contacts. The Ministry of Health and Wellness will continue contact tracing today to ensure that all other contacts are screened and tested when necessary. We continue working closely with the hotel's management to ensure that all measures are in place for disinfection and sanitization to reduce transmission to hotel workers and guests. More detailed information will be provided to the public as we progress with contact tracing, testing and investigations. The public is advised that protocols are still in place and these include the use of face masks in public and maintaining safe physical distance from others. That was Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George. In other COVID-related news, the St. Lucia Fire Service has informed that as a result of the continued threat of COVID-19, all non-essential visits to the fire stations are suspended until further notice. Due to the hazardous nature of the activities carried out at fire stations, combined with fire officers being first responders to confirmed and suspected COVID-19 calls, the department is endeavoring to limit the possible risks of transmission between the public and officers and vice versa. Effective immediately, no vending is allowed on the premises, nor non-working related visitations or tours of fire appliances, equipment or station compounds. Persons who walk into a fire station to request emergency medical assistance or to report an emergency should go directly to the control room window to make such a report. A face mask covering both the nose and mouth should be worn. Persons who come in to transact business in the administrative and fire prevention departments of the fire service are also required to wear a face mask covering both the mouth and nose. Everyone will be subjected to a temperature check before entry into the building, as well as a mandatory hand sanitization. Automatic sanitization dispensers are strategically placed within the buildings for ease of access and use. In celebration of International Literacy Day and as a culminating event of the OECS US Aid Early Learners Program, the OECS Commission, in partnership with the United States Agency for International Development US Aid, hosted a webinar to showcase the achievements of the ELP. Anissi Antoine reports. The United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, partnered to host a webinar to showcase the achievements of the Early Learners Program under the theme, The Future of Reading in the OECS. The Early Learners Program, ELP, addresses the essential aspects of policy and practice in order to improve the reading levels of all learners at the early primary levels, grade K to grade 3. The webinar described the impact of the ELP on early grade readers' performance and shared best practices throughout the OECS. Lisa Sajison Terrence, a reading specialist of the OECS USAID Early Learners Program, highlighted the importance of implementing a system which is able to identify the needs of students and provide the necessary support. Every education system should have a comprehensive assessment program and a program that naturally 
um, captures diagnostic assessment on our learners. And um, not just having the program uh, which has all types of assessment tools, but making sure that we capture that information very early um, from the pre-K um, years, from the early childhood years. Um, it is important to know what our children are coming in with and not just information related to their academics and so forth, but um, behavioral, behavioral information, information related to their psychomotor skills and so forth. And I can tell you some of that is already happening in our region because we do have some units in our ministries of education, our special needs unit, that actually undertake that type of screening of our children before they come in. Um, I would go further to say that for us to really capture these bits of information and our children from very early, um, it has to be a collaborative endeavor with the, our other stakeholders, our ministries of health. Angel Kaglin, Curriculum Officer at the Ministry of Education, stated that one of the main objectives of the project is to ensure that not only reading gains are achieved, but students enjoy reading. But I would say overall that while we consider all of those little factors um, in reading instruction, we really want to focus on the joy that we want students to experience as they read. We want them to enjoy the act of reading. And that means putting reading in the place where it belongs as we live our language, not just use language for functional purposes. So we want to situate our reading in the context of using language to live to enjoy life, not just function, but to enjoy completely. And so as we, we keep being evidence-based, we may look at new approaches from the balanced approach to let's say the science of reading, but the bottom line is we want students to not just be able to read, but to enjoy reading. The curriculum officer continues to urge parents to become more involved in the literary development of their students. Very importantly is to establish a connection with the teacher and with the school participate in whatever activities that are um, available at the school, especially in the areas of literacy, that helps, that will help you to understand what your child or your children are doing at school. Um, keeping abreast also of what children are doing at every stage, every, whether it's every week or um, every two weeks or every month, it helps you to be able to find ways that you can reinforce those concepts that children are learning at school, not through homework, but through um, activities and experiences around the home that will help the child to um, reinforce those concepts, whether it's as the parent mentioned, you know, reading labels, reading um, signs, reading posters, reading labels, all of these will help to reinforce. Um, reading to children and reading with children, these help. Um, having your child read to you also helps your child to practice his or her reading skills. The Early Learners Program comes to an end in September 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And as part of activities marking International Literacy Day 2020, the St. Lucia National Commission made a presentation of US $20,000 to the Government of St. Lucia through the Curriculum and Materials Development Unit, CAMDU, of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development to fund the development or designing of an implementation planning for the application of the St. Lucia National Language Policy. Funding for the project has been secured under the UNESCO Participation Program Request 2020-2021 Biennium and is in keeping with UNESCO's efforts at advocating for inclusive education policies and programs. The St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO encourages all those involved in education to redouble their investments and mobilize all their resources to unleash the potential of each individual in the service of a shared world. The Project Implementation Unit of the Global Environment Facility GEF 6 Southeast Coast Project on September 10, 2020 concluded a public relations and communications workshop for stakeholders. Lisa Joseph has the details. The Government of St. Lucia, noting the vast biodiversity of the southeast coast of the island and the socio-economic benefits that can be derived if the resources are carefully managed, is implementing an integrated ecosystem management project funded by the Global Environment Facility, the GEF. The GEF 6 South East Coast project is designed to enable sustainable economic development of the South East Coast by maintaining healthy ecosystems, 
sustainable livelihoods, and securing global environmental benefits. A key component of the project is public education and participation. The Department of Sustainable Development held a two-day public relations and communications workshop with stakeholders to develop a communication strategy. In as much as the project was defined in a particular way, but who are we trying to reach? Um, what message do we want to get there? And how do, we, how do we craft the messages in a way that the people will actually want to listen to it? So um, over the next two days, we're working with persons, like I said, from civil society to develop that strategy. Um, it, is, it is important to get the input of the people in the communities that you're trying to reach. They know so much more than the technocrats. They know what people listen to. They know the programs. You know, you know what they, they know what they like. So it is important for us to do that. So that is what it is that we'll be doing, engaging them over the next couple of days. Facilitator Aline Rages says discussions about ecosystems management, restoration and rehabilitation of sites and sustainable livelihoods, while technical, impact the residents of the southeast coast directly. But I think when you break it down, it is really getting persons to understand what natural resources that you have and how do you best use it to ensure that the future generations can benefit, but that also the people today can benefit without destroying, you know. And so the word sustainable, if we understand what that means, is very, very, very important in the process. So it's really looking at what it is that we have, ensuring that we don't lose more and what we have lost to try and restore and ensure that people can actually make a living from the, from, from the environment. The Department of Sustainable Development says it is critical that residents are included in order for the communities to take ownership of the project. We have people who are parts of um, producer groups, farmers and um, fishermen, um, private sector people in the area. So we want to ensure that um, everybody is, be, is able to benefit um, from the project and that based on um, their, their input into the communication strategy that we can also reach, you know, um, not just themselves, but, you know, the participants, you know, in the, in, in, in the communities. Um, as stakeholders, um, one of the components of the project is to um, develop sustainable livelihoods. So we want to ensure that um, based on um, activities identified, that the people generally in the, in the communities are able to use the project um, funds to uh, make use of the opportunities being provided for them. The workshop was held at the National Skills Development Center in V4. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Acquayal. Cut them loose. The anxieties, the worries, open up to possibilities. Accept the uncertainties and cut them loose. The bitterness, the hopelessness, plant a seed of hope in your mind. It will grow and flourish in time. Hold on a little longer. Life encourages you to grow. You have so much to offer. Look. Tomorrow is waiting to say hello. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll-free anytime to speak to a professional. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquial. Merci, Dr. Jesse. Merci, Madame du Département, Kenny Vesco Sabilité, Oué Formation en Gouvernement Setlesi, GIS, et Télévision Nationale PIA, NTN, Kapuzato Nouvelle à Creole. Présato, Primus Hutchinson. Moi, héritage Creole, ka recevoué yon image nouveau l'année sala, à résultat de maladie corona. Ni yon kofon à CPI Media PIA, les officiers place recherche folklore, FRC, as a pilot agents, explique what la ki celebration ka pwen lan eisi. Selon Executive Director FRC, Mamzel Louis Victor, celebration ek observos mwa eritaj kriol ka yitouve an pil publicite me sa sou media social. Wezo pou sa, se pou suiv se protokal la ki an plas pou proteksyon kont maladi korona. Me, 
Mamsel Victor explique que l'année la kaini en low activité qui très intéressant qui ça paraît avec qui paraît à sur télévision et médias sociaux. Par exemple, programme tous les semaines à sur manière pour servir langage que la première activité pour intéresser les plus jeunes, activité pour honorer les ata, les artistes qui très engagés font à théâtre. Et la kaini en demi nette production à sur monsieur Arthur Jacob qui c'était un ma pipi à théâtre cette ci On va mettre l'autre ça qui est encore plus important l'année ça là c'est programme côté cette lycée qui va vivre l'autre pays qui ça participer en caillou même côté monde à cette ci avec les autres pays qui ça ouais mané yo ka célébrer moi héritage là à culture manger danser et social et modèle les cojoueuses nous ka présenter um, tradition jouer nous ka présenter tradition um, danser tradition um, Couturez à cette ici, tradition manger avec tout, um, tout ça qui a fait héritage cette ici, ça y est, oui, chasse là y est, nous qui a présenté um, à différentes manières. Directeur exécutif RNC, Dui Magwe, en pile en ses activités à Kaye Pawet, à son télévision, en G en public, et qui a porté en pile éducation. Même si nous passons à venir ensemble même si nous passons ni um, un chai mon de yon place un chai ni ça nous ka fait ni un pile éducation um, à ce qu'il était cette ici à ce héritage cette ici et nous ka présenter à de à manière pour TV à ce social media à ce Um, Facebook, YouTube, c'est une manière ça. La majorité d'activités pour célébrer le héritage créole, qui est pour coup en fond la TSAB, commencé le 20 septembre, et pour la célébration même, euh, la Kadi de Sao, qui est une fête qui est pour coup le 25 octobre 2020. Les deux autres agences là, qui sont engagées pour supporter les euh, affaires d'activité, c'est Events Solution et la Fondation de Développement Culture, c'est le CDF. Le Mercastri, Peterson Francis, n'y est pas qui, c'est où il y a place à présent pour abattre la maladie de Corona, qui a découragé les étudiants pour ne pas duiver et combler ensemble au Liban, Ville Castri, comme qui était fait avant. Le Mercastri fait point cela, comme l'école vieux ouvert opération après cinq mois, il a été fermé à résultat de Corona. Selon le Mercastri Francis, Situation côté les étudiants qui a continué pour combler un ville castri, c'est toujours yon qui a chagriné et public là, généralement. Et vous remarquez que celle-là, que ça a fait pour le moment, c'est garder la manière la situation qui a marché et que j'ai espoir que bon science qui a réussi par ces jeunes gens là, les yon en ville castri. Le maire Francis complimenté le ministère de l'Éducation à ce degré, ça a accompli pour placer le en place en préparation pour les étudiants à vivre l'école. En opinion, il y a le ministère fait plus que ça, il y a eu des capables pour accomplir. Le maire Castro a ajouté que le grand travail de la salle, comme vous trouvez que le ministère a tenu un plan qui est bien accoré, et ça qui est à présent, c'est pour garder si plan salle qui continue à pouvoir en faveur. Le maire Francis aussi a cru que c'est pour le ministère et les teachers toujours indiquer les étudiants pour continuer à adopter ces attitudes, pour suivre ce protocole qui est en place. Peter, Peter St. Francis dit que les étudiants n'ont pas comprendre qu'ils ont joué un rôle qui est très important pour faire une grande contribution et que ça c'est pour résister à cette action, pour combler et driver au Léon et le casque. Le ministre des Affaires Égalité et Justice Sociale qui a notifié le public que le programme des assistances pour les gens qui ont pour moi à août, commencé mercredi, le 9 septembre et Kaibout vendredi le 20 septembre. Ça peut être la connaître plus mais qu'on l'argent les pauvres. C'est pas mal ça là qui fait un bureau ville qu'on cite Castri et c'est pas mal qui est available depuis 9 h matin ou juste midi après midi. C'est juste midi et demi après midi tous les jours. Et si vous avez pour trouver plus d'informations, vous avez fait contact avec le ministère de l'égalité et de la justice sociale à l'imo téléphone 468. 5108, ça veut dire 468 secondes.
Est-ce que ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là, je merci autant pour regarder, je vais avoir une invitation. Je ne peux pas encore se dire, conserver la vie, je vais présenter une autre nouvelle. En quoi est-ce que ça, je vais présenter une autre nouvelle. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned to the station for more government programming. Goodbye.